Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 9th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. Well, as I'm recording this, it's Patch Tuesday, and with that, we got from Microsoft patches for 92 different vulnerabilities. Out of these 92, three are rated critical. Three have already been disclosed previously, but none of them has already been exploited. Probably the most interesting vulnerability here, I think, is actually the RDP client vulnerability. It's a remote code execution vulnerability. An attacker would have to trick the victim to connect to a malicious uh, RDP server. That's usually accomplished via a URL and has been done in the past. Microsoft does rate this vulnerability as more likely to be exploited and details have already been released. Another critical vulnerability that we have here is CVE 2022-23277. This is a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft Exchange Server. It does require credentials, but any credentials will do and the code will be executed with elevated privileges. So certainly something to take serious. Two more critical vulnerabilities here are the remote code execution vulnerability in the HEVC and the VP9 video extensions. So in order to exploit this, well, all we have to do is get the user to click on the link in order to view a video. And this may then lead to the code execution using that particular user's privileges. The number of 92 vulnerabilities also does include uh, Chromium patches, so uh, they may have been released a few days earlier, but they're always sort of included in the list of patches for the particular patch Tuesday. Other already disclosed vulnerabilities include a uh, .NET Visual Studio Remote Code Execution Vulnerability, CVSS score only of 6.3 and exploitation is rated as less uh, likely. And then we do also have uh, the Windows Fax and Scan Services elevation of privilege vulnerabilities, also less likely going to be exploited according to Microsoft and the CVSS score of 7.8. And then again, the third one uh, that's already has been disclosed was the RDP client vulnerability. I don't see anything that I think would raise sort of uh, alarm bells here in terms of you know having to approve a lot of overtime or so to get the patches rolled out. Start with the Exchange server, then get the RDP clients going, which probably you may just as well install the cumulative patch according to whatever sort of patching procedure you're using. But talking about interesting vulnerabilities, we also uh, got uh, details regarding some vulnerabilities that APC recently patched in its uh, UPS systems. The vulnerabilities were discovered by security company Armis, and they now released a blog post with details regarding the nature of these vulnerabilities. According to the good old saying these days that everything is better with the cloud, some of the more modern APC UPSs will connect to a cloud service, but they're not actually properly validating TLS. The particular TLS library being used here, well, if there is an error occurring during the TLS setup, you should just disconnect, which uh, APC fails to do, which then essentially allows an attacker to bypass some of uh, the certificate verification steps, as well as uh, include a buffer overflow. The end effect here is that an attacker would be able to trigger a firmware update and to make things worse, the firmware does not have to be signed. It's just encrypted using a simple symmetric key. So in the end, an attacker will be able to load a rogue firmware into the device and with that essentially take control of the device and of course affect the power state of anything connected to the UPS. Pretty good write-up uh, and uh, really some nice details here in the nature of the vulnerabilities, but to the people at RMS, uh, please take down the keyword usage and marketing language a little bit in these write-ups. They really sort of distract from the substance of what you are presenting. 
And talking about firmware, we also got 16 new vulnerabilities in HP UEFI. This was disclosed by Binarly and their blog post. You'll find the link uh, in the show notes uh, has all the details. Also, HP released corresponding bulletins with links and details regarding patches. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.